Howdy, brothers and sisters. Uh, we well, went grocery shopping the other day. You know, like I said, I said before on these little speakings that there's a gentleman. He's a brother of Christ. Uh, he comes down once a month. He picks me up, runs me down to the grocery store about five miles down the road or so. Drops me off for 30 minutes to an hour, however long I see that I'm going to need to be in there. And he comes back and picks me up. Bring me back to the house and we unload groceries. And we got to talk a little bit. We always talk about God, you know. Uh, I do my best. Uh, and we got to talking on the return trip. On uh, prayers, God's love, all these things that y'all hear me speak on. And I told him, I said, man, what a, what a change it would be. I, because I have found out this. There's, there's two types of people that when they hear the truth, this, there are two types of people. They don't want to hear that. Because what they've heard, the doctrine they've heard is, it feeds their flesh. And, you know, they could be a professing brother and sister in Christ. They could be a saint, but they still feed the flesh. They want doctrine. They don't want sound doctrine. I said, boy, what an amazing event. I said, I have come to find out, though. Them other people, see, them is the moment that's, Excited, uh, because when you speak the truth, they say, "Well, man, wait, 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 that's not what I heard. That's not what I've been told." Yada yada. Uh, so it opens the door up, and I, and that you know, it's and it's always good for the hearers for we can we can start to uh, speak unto them the word of God, because see, it's only the truth that pricks the heart. Lies, they don't freak the heart. Uh, like, it's supposed to be freaked. Uh, so, we got to talking, and I said, you know, on, on prayer, and, and I, you know, and and uh, we, we, an unbeliever, or even a believer, uh, something uh, happens in their life, and then, and, 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 Somebody puts their hand on their shoulders and pats them on the back and says, you know, well, just pray to God. He hears your prayers. Well, yeah, that's a lie. That's a lie. Wouldn't it be something interesting if they were told the truth? Well, we know God don't hear all prayers, don't we? We've, we've gone over this several times. We know God don't answer all prayers, and it ain't because it's his timing. It's because we screwing it up. Messing it up, excuse me. Uh, we either asking a mess, we got some stuff in our hearts, and God just ain't going to deal with it. But we want to blame it on God. When it's in God's timing, I know, sometimes God says it's got a lot to do with you. 99%, I would say, has to do with the prayee. That's doing the prayer. Uh, but would it be interesting if, if for once you stood up and corrected a brother and heir? Wouldn't that be an amazing thing? And this is what's going to happen. You're going to gain a brother, lose a brother. It's that simple. Because you don't want to lose a brother because you're scared of them, you don't. I'm, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I see it all the time. Oh, I still visit people. I'm not on Facebook no more. And I don't have friends, per se, but I still go visit people's sites. I see what's going on still. Uh, oh, another one. Wouldn't it be interesting when when somebody said, well, we're supposed to love our children like God does unconditionally. Wouldn't it be interesting if you were to correct that brother in there, that sister in there? There's nowhere in the world says God's word, love is unconditional. None, nowhere. But you don't want to offend somebody. You don't want to lose a brother. Because this is, this is basic doctrine. 
But now y'all know me. Y'all should know the where it's at in the Bible. But because they say, well, you know, we're supposed to love our children unconditionally. I deal with some unbelievers. Their 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 sons and their daughters are back and forth, in and out of prison, in and out of prison, in and out of prison, in and out of jail, in and out of jail, all out of jail. And they say, well, we're supposed to love them unconditionally, like God tells us to. And, and it's you know, I tell them, you know, God don't say that nowhere in Scripture. No. Matter of fact, God said, don't associate with them. Yeah. Don't eat with them. Don't fellowship with them. Put away from you that wicked person. See, wouldn't it be an amazing if we started actually speaking the truth? <clears throat> One thing's going to happen. You're going to lose them or you're going to draw them. Truth either offends, truth draws. One or two. But see, that's not in, 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 in our decision on well should we tell them the truth should we not tell them the truth god says we should always speak the truth especially if someone's in error especially if it's a brother or a sister you know i talked to this brother the other day and he was saying well we should be careful how we talk to them we should tell them this and tell them that and i told him i said you know an unbeliever don't even have no idea what you're talking about they, they would have no idea about what you're talking about because that is for a seasoned believer. What we just need to do is tell them the simple truth of God's Word. And it can open a door up. Well, that's not what I've heard. That's not what I've been told. And you get taken with God's Word to show them the truth. Because I, I I, I'm just going to tell you the honest part of it. Everybody wants to be told the truth. I do. I want to be told the truth. I'd rather you tell me the truth than tell me half a truth. Matter of fact, I'd rather you just tell me a bald-faced lie instead of tell me half the truth. I mean, if you're going to lie, just come on, let's get it on. I'd rather you tell me a straight-up 100% bald-faced lie than tell me half the truth. Because, see, a lie might be that you don't know the truth yet. And you're unlearned. That's what Scripture says. Paul does say it's ignorance. <laughs> but it could mean you're unlearned. But if you tell me a half-truth, then i got to look at you differently. Because you do know a portional part of it. But are you being, are you speaking the words of deception to me? Are you trying to snare me up? See, I'd rather you tell me a bald faced lie. I can look at you with discernment then and say, okay, this is that and this is this. So, and then we got to talking. So that was on prayer. Oh, unconditional love. And we had a brother. And I called him a brother because he told me he was a brother. He passed the other day. He had throat cancer. And everybody said, well, well, I'm so sad to see him go. And, and my response was, well, I wouldn't. And somebody said, why? Was he a bad guy? I said, no. I'm pretty sure this guy here was one of the few that was called that made it in. I, I'm 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 pretty sure old old Jackie there made it in. He out of the call. He was pro I'm 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 just that mm, that he was one of the few that made it in. I mean, so sad to see him go. Why? I think it's a glorious thing. Really, I don't understand these people. Really, I don't. Uh, I mean, look at David. He saw it while, while his baby was living. When he died, David got up and got on it. So, you know, it, it, that outward fakeness, really? Are you really sad to see him go? Let me ask you this. In the last year, how many times did you and him sit down a fellowship together? Well, you know, we'd be busy. We, you know, 
Also, in a year you ain't fellowship, but you were so sad to see your brother go. You're a hypocrite and you're a liar. <laughs> I mean, you know, folks, we just need to be, it's time. You know, there's a book I got in there, and I'm not much on books. And I bought it a long time ago. I really ain't read a lot of it. I've dabbled in it, and it's not a bad book. And the reason I got it was called the title. It says, it's time to get serious. It's time to get serious. Yeah, yeah. But the other day we spoke on on, on, on Brother Zach, how he, he speaks on us, how we can, we can neglect our salvation. Yeah, we're not denying God. We're not, oh, well, I would never deny Jesus. Well, let me ask you, who is Jesus? Jesus is the Word of God. Well, you know, Brother Andy, that's what it says in the beginning. No, take your high, take go into Revelations and see who's coming back. He's going to come back on the horse. His breast is going to be covered in blood, and his name is the Word of God. So, let's see this. Those who deny me, deny. I'll deny as well. Now, we got to remember. Please don't look at Peter. Peter's for the Christ. <coughs> Peter was before the cross. Well, Peter denied him before the cross. See, this is this is one of the portions where you, you can't you can't use before the cross in our gospel. That's one just one of them. So let's say we deny the Word of God. We deny the Word of God. Brother and sister, it is time to get serious. It's time to get serious. I had a brother ask me not long ago, he said, you know, we're having some issues. Yeah, me and, we, me and the wife are just, I love, and, and, but we're just having issues. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, honestly, this is where the issues lie. After after counseling, this is where the issues lie. That father would come home after work. And then wife would come home after what she done. I think she had a party time job, you know. The kids would come home from school. And all they would talk about was that kingdom out there. How, how, boy, did you hear what happened in the news today? Bye, 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 bye. They spoke 90%. It come down, it come down when all, when all the uh, cutting was done and the figuring. They talked 90 something percent of the time about. The kingdom out there talked about the kingdom of God less than 10%. Man, that's not even meeting what they call the tithing requirement. Think about that. When, when, I, I don't know, speak a long time ago, which kingdom do you speak more of? Uh, is, is your heart and mind caught up in the kingdom of this world out here? All this vaccinations and stuff going on, and and now they're saying it's dangerous even to wear a mask. And, 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 and today, man, I, I came up, you know, opened up my my thing, and and it was there. Uh, all the stars that we've lost in 2021, and you know, uh, you know the things and people. Oh, and it, and and I got <coughs> I gotta go. I I gotta look into it. So I look into it, and I, I really don't read the article. Care less about what they say. Really, I don't. Because that that stuff, it, it, it's just, it, 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 uh. <laughs> you know what I like reading? The comments. Yeah, the comments. So, you know, but it come to be that, that he speaks in, in their house, in their unit, after they've been out in the world all day, they come home and that's what they talk about. The world. Nothing about the kingdom of God. 
Oh, they go to church on Sundays, man. They religious. Then Sunday night, too. Oh, and Wednesday, if they can make it. If they ain't nothing come up. It's time to be serious. Uh, but, but like I said, we're talking that brother, so, and we got talking about uh, telling the people the truth. And I'm going to ask you, when is the last time you sat down and actually talked to somebody about truth? You know, I, I don't know because I don't know, uh, we don't know each other. But when is the last time you actually sat down and talked about it? And you know something? You, know, you ain't got to be, uh, ooh, here comes that word. No, I ain't going to use that word. You don't have to be learned as much as a lot of people are. We need to become learned on, on God's Word. We don't need to remain unlearned, ignorant. Uh, but, you, you, I mean, after, I, if you've been hanging around with me for a while and all the stuff I post on this site, it's not just mine because I'm not a prideful man. I like listen to Brother Zach. When I hear a good one, I save it. There's so much there. You shouldn't, okay? <clears throat> you don't have an excuse to be unlearned no more. The excuses are gone. Excuses are gone. You know, if we are not laboring within our kingdom, do you know what God calls that? He, you're slothful. You're slothful servant. You're lazy. That's just it. It's time to get serious. Like the name of that book said, time to get serious. Uh, so, and I'm like I say, I, you know, <laughs> fifty something subscribers. Once in a blue moon comment. I see I, it it makes me I'm like Paul on this. I'm very concerned about your salvation. Well, brother Andy, you say I'm not a Christian? Nope, can't say you ain't sealed. But but come on. Let's be honest about it. Even if you're not saying nothing on this old channel here, if you're not conversing with, with, with Brother Andy, if you don't want to fellowship with me, that's fine. But remember, what do you what do you do and you fellowship with the others? Are you are you concerned about their souls? Are you telling the truth? Or are you just going on in that religiosity? You know, they say there's some that have a form of religion. They seem religious. And brothers and sisters, some of them are saints. Yeah. yeah. Some of them had that moment of belief and they become sealed and they kind of just, that, well, they never got strong in the first place. They never grew up. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm a firm believer. I am a firm believer in this. The ones that have not, that have become snared, they never grew up out of the baby stage. They never grew up out of baby stage. Their faith was not established. To their faith, they didn't add knowledge. They didn't add temperance. They didn't add brotherly kindness. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, and they never growed up. Because it says a young man, First John describes that young man has become strong in the world that abides in him and has learned to overcome the wicked one. See, them folks, you know that? That's where Peter says, you shall never fall. You shall never fall. So so this is it. You need to put that mirror up, as they say, examine ourselves. You need to put that mirror up. Am I, am I still an infant? Am I still unskillful in the words of righteousness? And brothers and sisters, if your heart answers yes, And if the Holy Spirit lives in you, 
If you're sealed and you honestly, with a good and honest heart, ask God, am I, where am I in my maturity? If, if After all these 10, 15 years, am I still a babe? Am I still unskillful? Father, you got to tell me. You got to let me know. And, and God will do it through the Holy Spirit. If you, if you really want to know, then if, and then it, this is it. If, if God says you're still a, yes, yes, child, you're still a baby. You're, you're unlearned. You're ignorant. You're whatever, unskillful. Yes. Okay. The next thing is, why would you want to remain there? You know, because it says you could fall. It says if you do this, 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 and this, you shall never fall. Second Peter one. I, you know, I I just dropped in today, and and I know I sound like a broken daggum record. Maybe that's why I don't have a lot of fellowship on my side. I don't know. But hey. If not for you, maybe for someone down the road later. Because I have picked up a couple of new subscribers, and I, you know that don't mean nothing. That really don't mean nothing. I don't, I, I don't see it. It means anything to me. I think it means something. Somebody somewhere. Uh, I can care less. Well. I know that somebody out there need to hear this. Or you know somebody out there that needs to hear this. Love y'all. Always praying for you. I'll see you next time around.